in that, as far as the wrestling did, what I did was I intimidated a lot of people. I didn't give a fuck. Hey, look who it is. Who is it? Hey, what's what's going on, guys? Can you hear me? Yeah, hey, don't don't act so excited, man. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you, act, you just act thrilled to be here, man. <laughs> what are you talking about? I've literally been like, like, like two like, seconds. Hey. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, it is still 930 for me. I'm still drinking my coffee. So and it's Friday. Hey, we're recording, by the way. We just get right into this shit, man. We hit the record button. We don't prep. We don't We don't have any idea what we're going to talk about. No. We All go right. with the flow. Zero. The only thing we want to know is if you subscribe to Lila Studios Wrestling with Rip Rogers, and have you ever watched any episodes of this show before in your entire life? Would you Tell like a lie? Would you like the li- a lie or the truth? I want the truth, baby. Yeah. Nothing but the truth. <laughs> the truth is I don't have enough time to do anything. Uh, I feel bad. Uh, uh, <laughs> No, dude, I work full time. I got my wife. I got my dog. I got family. So there's my wife has stuff planned. I like I have like an itinerary for my entire life that's always planned out, and mm-hmm. I barely have enough time to do anything. So I apologize. I have not, but I appreciate you guys inviting me to be on. Uh, I, I I watched your episode with uh, Renee Dupree on the Renee Dupree the show. I must oh, not. Have, think? I, I must not have a life. I guess I don't. I don't do. <laughs> Hey, thanks for coming on, man. We're here with Johnny Jeter. Hey, by the way, don't go watch our last episode. It's a good thing you don't watch because once you sent a message saying that you weren't going to be on our show today when you canceled, we buried you. We totally buried you on the last show. Jesus Christ. We were, we were, (laughs) who would, who would want to watch a cheerleader anyway? We said all this bad stuff. So you said that. We we apologize. (laughs) Now you're back. We like you again now. You're back on the show. I appreciate that. We didn't mean any of that, did we? We were just hey, we were just doing this, baby. That's all we were being doing. Being heels. No, I I sincerely apologize for not being able to make it at nine o'clock. I just, you know, you when you get I'm actually working right now. And uh yeah, I blocked off my calendar, but when sometimes unexpected meetings come up and I just Hey, no worries. Hey, I wonder where you get that microphone. You you sound so good. You should be like a DJ or something. You sound great, man. I noticed that on Thank Renee's you. <laughs> no, actually, uh, <laughs> Antonio, the promised Thomas, him and I did. Uh, we well, we had a podcast for a little bit. It was uh, called uh, What's Your Finish? I'll Move. And uh, it was <laughs> nice. and it was like kind of like because when I got out of professional wrestling, like after I left WD, I got out like I yeah. disconnected. I quit watching. I just I want it sounds bad. I just wanted nothing to do with wrestling for a while. Like, I think I was just burnt out any of that so anyway i ended up getting back into it started my wrestling school and then uh promise thomas was like dude we gotta catch you up on the last like when did you leave i'm like ah 2008 he's like dude we gotta catch you up on the last like what you know 15 years so he would he would have me watch a match of new guys new talent stuff uh and then kind of we would critique the match online and just kind of give feedback so he has his he's kept up with it for years so he's just like he has his perspective i have mine and i'll tell you and i think i was talking to rip on the phone about it it's like wrestling has just changed so much it blows my mind and half the stuff i see if not 90 percent of the stuff i see i would have been fired or yelled at or just reamed for that stuff and i'm just it makes me wonder it's like what you know what happened it's almost like the indie indie guys kind of took over and they're very talented they're very athletic very um you know they're, they're they're athletes but um you know i the storytelling it doesn't really seem like there's a lot of that it's a lot of high spots and people cheer that on and um i'm like i couldn't remember half that crap if i had planned a match like that you know i i told rip the exact same thing on on remembery there is no way i could wrestle because there is no way i could remember all that there's no shit. way there's, no there's way. just it would be impossible somebody one of those uh girl wrestlers came out i can't remember <laughs> and said something about uh, she's talking about chris ben wall and said that like ben wall wouldn't be able to wrestle today or could i was like yeah no shit he couldn't he couldn't remember all that shit there's no way there's no way ben <laughs> wall could probably remember nine thousand spots in one whatever i don't know oh it, my it, god yeah it's it's yeah it's it's a, it's a lot different but real quick though take a step back dude i haven't seen you like or talked to you like literally in years like i have what have you been up to these days i think last time like i think in ovw like i think uh you were you were a, a school teacher right or you were you were kind of working at the high school was that a long time ago are you really- still doing he, oh, oh, by the way, Rip doesn't really participate in these things. He just kind of plays on his phone and okay, I do all the gotcha. talking. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I quit teaching like three years ago, I think four years ago, something like that. Um, Rip says, I'm just, what do I do, Rip? Just hang nothing. out. <laughs> nothing. I think he father of the do. year and husband of the year. 
Hey, and, that counts. Uh, producer of the year and come on, come on, man. What's my sister fucking texting me? <laughs> fucking me. He's the only person that has his phone ring when he gets texts. So- yeah, sister podcast. Yeah, he has a, he has a, yeah. Well, we've been fucking that, podcast for how many goddamn hours? I'm up at three thirty in the morning, fucking training. We're we're on hour four right now today, yeah. so Rip's getting a little testy right now. He's, Wait, are you guys really on hour four? Yeah, yeah. Wait, yeah. you guys just you guys just been filming back to back episodes. We did two episodes, and then we just interviewed uh, Jerry Bam Bam Penders. You remember Jerry Penders? Ah, he, Penders. Yes, yeah. of course, dude. He. He looks like a little young Scott Steiner now. Well, I don't know yeah, if there's a little yeah. Scott Steiner, but he, dude, he's a, yeah. Penders looks, <laughs> looks Jack. So he you mentioned 2008. That he That was about the time he left OVW. So he was, yeah. and he got out, I think he said for seven or eight years before he, he got back in. So he's doing a bunch of shit now. So it's pretty cool. But um, I, what I do like to ask is on here, we do a lot of first. Like I, I'm intrigued personally by first. You know, when people were getting started, where they first trained, first match, that kind of shit. Did you go to OVW right out of high school? Was that your first <clears throat> training facility? Was that out of high school? It, it was my first training uh, school, but uh, an only training school. But I didn't go right out of high school. I, I graduated high school. I went to Cal State Long Beach. I was a criminology major. Um, but I would I was always a huge wrestling fan. And I would like, you know, watch, obviously, you know, Raw, SmackDown, Sunday Night Heat. They had Velocity on yeah. Saturday nights, at, like one in the morning. I just remember be, being in my in my dorm room uh, just watching it. And I'm, they always had like a WWE guy versus some nobody, you know, and then I was just watch it. And I'm like, I, I could do that. And I know I can do it better than that guy. And that guy's on TV. Are you, you talking know? about the nobody or the other guy? <laughs> the nobody at the time but i mean dude i was 5 11 165 170 pounds maybe um so my parents weren't thrilled when i came back to tell them that i wanted to use my college money to be a pro wrestler um but i think my dad thought i'd just get it out of my system or whatnot so uh yeah we packed up my stuff moved to louisville i lived in audubon park in this guy's basement um i worked at chili's six days a week double shifts i'd hit gold's gym after i got off work and then uh, I trained in the Saturday class, amateur with Nick Dinsmore, um, which was awesome. And I will say <laughs> uh, that I, that class, I mean, let's let's just be honest. It was probably just like a moneymaker for Danny at the time. Right. But I think there I think once I got there uh, and everyone was really, really nice and kind. So I hope I, I don't want this to be interpreted the wrong way. But like, you know, once I think Cage, myself and Mark Magnus got there, I think they kind of thought, oh, maybe these guys have some talent to some degree no matter how little (laughs) uh so they would our i think our real practice started once the amateur class ended because everyone would leave and then guys like cena conway dinsmore um you know they would just stay after and work with us and uh and yeah they just kind of showed us everything we needed to know but but there was never like a curriculum or like a syllabus saying hey week one we're gonna do slams week two you're gonna do rolls week three you're gonna do bumps you know it was just kind of like you just learn as you go. Whatever we were, they were teaching yep. that day, you learn. And, um, maybe but maybe no. it's just because you were all three like young hot boys. Maybe that's what. That like, very well could be the case. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of it from that perspective, but uh, now that you mentioned it. <laughs> what, what year was that? Jesus Christ. Uh, se- right after 9-11, super, September 2001. Because I, I came down, um, I was teaching at the time, so I'm I'm 48, so I was always older than everybody else when i got started i didn't even come there until i was like 27 i think are you on yeah i'm on sorry can you hear me sorry yeah we can get yeah we got you yeah sorry i just i have to move my i have this well i I didn't i didn't make sure i'm online for work to make sure that they know i'm online but i have an automatic mouse mover so it's just moving my mouse i got you all right no problem but um it was i think 2000 maybe two ish but it was the same as nick at the old building on saturdays yeah Mm-hmm. And even at that time, when I, came, I mean, there was like uh, six people. I was just telling me and Bam Bam were talking about it. You know, nobody came back. I was there um, with with six new people. I was the only one that came back the next Saturday. But I remember you guys were, you guys then were kind of that you would come and kind of hang out a little bit with Nick and get in the ring kind of when our class was getting over. And it was kind of the kind of the same deal. What you, that was that was what year you said you came? I want to say like 2000 two or three or something but so so you you did go to the mechanic street uh, oh yeah school. yeah yeah yep okay yeah I, I i don't think we were in that amateur class long we ended up getting into the advanced class pretty quickly but i know we did still try to go to yeah, that you guys would come hang class. out drink coffee hang out. they act yeah. like you're cool and stuff like that yeah probably yeah we were <laughs> we were young and stupid 
playing wrestler, you know. You remember hey, look at um, me, guys. <laughs> you remember who who came in? Now you mentioned Cage and, and Magnus. Was there anybody else in like that came in with you that you remember um besides those two? Um, there was some guy from Minnesota. Dinsmore tried to get me to there's no way you guys would actually know who these guys are, but there was uh, maybe like, they, they they called him the shooter. And he was like some some wrestler from Minnesota, but he was super stiff. It wasn't Brock Lesnar, <laughs> but it was. Although I'm probably describing him. No, he was. Uh, no, he was just kind of the short guy. But um, no, he was in the amateur class for a while, and I think he left. But when I was there, like Joe Dirt was in there. Oh yeah, amazing, uh, amazing Pookie. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, Pookie, real white dude, real Pookie, real yeah. white, real white. Yeah, Dinsmore yeah. would just get in there. He'd be like, he's like, all right, everybody, clothesline practice. Pookie, get in the ring. Clothesline the shit out of everybody. <laughs> but yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. The no no curriculum. Like, yeah, it was just, you just got in and kind of did. I mean, because people were always starting every week. Every times, every Saturday, yeah. there was a new, you know, group of people coming in. So you couldn't really do it that way. I don't think like, hey, no. we, when, because there was so many people already past that. Yeah. Level. Where we, not starting yeah, exactly you hit it not starting at the same time and it's like with my school now it's like and i look and no, notice other schools they have like almost like semesters like hey we are starting on this date you sign up for that class you miss a class you probably you miss out on that lesson but ultimately it starts and it ends i feel like when it's obw it was more kind of like you pay your tuition but it was really kind of ad hoc you learn as you go and it wasn't yeah. you know and it's so but with my guys it's like I, i'm like wow when i was putting when i was trying to figure out how am i going to train these guys i was like well I mean, I guess, I mean, they got to learn how to roll. They got to learn how to bump. They got to have strength and conditioning before we do any of that just to make sure they can go in the ring. But I'm like, I don't remember actually having that curriculum. Like it wasn't so like, you know, uh, it wasn't set up that way. And so organized and 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 drawn out over a spirit period of time to make sure you learn everything. But you never really learn everything. But it's, well, I, uh, I remember Nick would like either either during like a break or he'd have people getting ready for matches or something like that. Then he would bring some of his newer guys in just to bump, like in the ring, just to teach his bumps, mm -hmm. like basically off to the side while others were busy doing something Practice. else. And right. Had to break us in on on the bumps and and you know different small shit like that. So or on when or on Wednesdays the. Uh... You know, oh, Brock wants to practice his new finisher in the ring. Oh, oh uh, or Matt Morgan wants to practice his new finish in the ring. Oh, you know, Pookie, get in the ring. You know, uh, yeah. We just yeah. Talked about that too. Uh, when Matt Morgan <laughs> and Nathan Jones came down to practice oh, yeah. for a pay per view they were getting ready to do. And I don't know if you remember the little dude named Timberwolf that was like an oh, old. Oh, my. Oh, yeah. They Last did a double, Carnival like, Strongman. Double beal on him and he landed right on his head and <laughs> turned purple. And Nick called 911. It was awful, dude. Uh, it was Aww. so bad. So it's hey, you you mentioned the wrestling school, so let's just get that in there, man. Let's get let's get your plug in. Let's put your wrestling school over. Yeah, tell sure. us all about it. Tell us what you're doing. We we usually don't skip you know ahead like this, but you already brought it up, so let's just. Let's oh, just sorry. Yeah, yeah I, um, no, no, you're good, man. No, yeah. So I think, I mean, once I left pro wrestling, I got my bachelor's in accounting, and then I became an internal auditor, and I work in IT audit. So you know and that pays the bills, but I think just the kill the monotony of the the eight to five um I've, i mean i've always loved wrestling i got out and i'm and i don't regret getting out but i i do miss it and i do think about it um and i once we moved to northern california i just thought you know i know there's a handful of wrestling schools up here but i know they don't they weren't trained at ohio valley wrestling like ohio valley wrestling was the harvard of professional wrestling schools in my opinion so i and i just thought you know hey you know if i can you know, teach guys the right way. Cause I ended up watching on TV. I see spot fest, no storytelling, no selling. And I'm like, God, is that what they're teaching these guys these days? Cause if that's the case, like I know my, I can make my students stand out by teaching them the way I was taught. So uh, uh, yeah, I looked for some commercial real estate uh, around here, but it's California is just ridiculously expensive. So I have a detached garage. That's pretty big. I'm like, why don't I just set the ring up in there, get some mats you know what I mean? Stu Hart did less. He didn't even have a ring. He just had his basement. You know what I mean? But I got a 16 by 16 foot ring. I got mats along the side. I got lockers. I got a fridge. Oh, wow. um, and then uh, I was just like, hey, let's uh, let's do it. The ceiling's a little low, so they can't really go the top rope. But in my head, I'm thinking they shouldn't even be going to the top rope anyway. They need to learn how to work first. You know, that stuff will come. Um, but let's just let's get the basics and foundations down. So, uh, yeah, I, I got an LLC. I got my business license. I uh 
Um, got my website rocking and rolling, social media, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, I just started advertising. And uh, I got four students now, um, and it's it's great. I, I love teaching them. Uh, and then you haven't told us the it. name of it yet. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, it's called Banticore Wrestling Academy, um, which sounds cheesy, but I kind of looked at it like a manticore is the 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 body the, the the head and body of a lion, the tail of a scorpion, and the wings of a dragon. And it's kind of like, you know, it takes the best parts of the coolest animals and makes it himself. I remember when I was at, with OBW, they'd be like, hey, uh, name four of your favorite wrestlers. And I said, OK, uh, Shawn Michaels, Chris Benoit, Chris Jericho, Jeff Hardy. And they said, well, what do you like about those guys? And I'm like, well, I like Shawn's charisma. I like Jericho's in ring style, I like Benoit's intensity. Um, and I like the way Jeff Hardy get, you know, sells. And they were like, OK, take the best parts of your favorite wrestlers and make that you. And now you have a unique style. So I'm like, it's kind of like a manicure, taking the best parts of the coolest animals, making them themselves. So that's kind of why hey, I named I it Manticore it Wrestling you, Academy. You did. <laughs> well, I, most people don't even really know what a manicure is. So I feel like I need to kind of explain you it. What's your, uh, what's your website? It's uh, man, www.manicorewrestlingacademy.com. Nice. There you go, yeah. baby. We we got so many people to watch this show. You might have you might have student number five after this episode. Oh, sweet, yeah. I mean, you know what's cool is uh, we got a show. We got our first show coming up uh, at Movement Brewing Company, October twenty second, uh, in Rancho Cordova. We got six matches, um, and uh, and and yeah, it's kind of the first show. I'm hoping uh, you know promote Manicor a little bit over there as well to kind of see if I can get some more students too. So, but so is is it your show or you're taking your students to somebody else's show? No, it's it's my show. I'm I'm promoting it. They're paying me to bring the wrestlers. I had to kind of get in touch with a lot of wrestlers here in Sacramento um, and Northern California just to kind of get them on the show. And, and one of my students may wrestle on the show because um, I don't have enough to obviously book an entire show the way kind of yeah. Danny did at Ohio Valley. Um, but uh, it's just also a way to kind of get the Manicor name out there, promote some shows, get something regular. So when the guys are ready, they can wrestle um, and they do have kind of like a forum to kind of you know get that experience. Awesome, man. So let's go back to uh, OVW. You said you weren't yeah. in the uh, beginner class too long, went to the whatever intermediate or advanced. You still weren't under contract, though, right? Was that at the time? Was that still at the old building or they hadn't moved to the new building yet, right? When no, you they hadn't. They had, no, there was this was still at Mechanic Street. So I ended up. So, yeah, in the beginner class. And then I I bought a ticket to go home to San Diego um and I saved up all my money and I wasn't making a ton of money. I didn't realize the minimum wage for at working as a waiter at Chili's was $2 and 90 cents. I thought it was like tips, seven, or eight bucks. <laughs> yeah. You live off your tips. Mm -hmm. So I saved the money, got my ticket. And then Danny's like, Hey, I need you and cage to wrestle Batista at six flags, Kentucky kingdom. So I was like, yep, sir. No problem. I ended up uh, canceling my ticket wrestling the show. We got destroyed in 90 seconds. Parents at ringside. I'm sure my, my dad was probably like, Oh yeah, my son's wrestling the next match. And then Batista comes out and he's like, uh, that's my son right there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh because we just got destroyed but i think danny appreciated that i i can't when he found out i canceled my ticket to go home to do that he ended up getting me into an hwa a tryout wb trial camp at hwa in cincinnati with les thatcher um, dr tom kevin kelly were there um and so i did that for a week um and i never got a call back <laughs> i saw Kevin Kelly backstage at OVW one day, like six or seven weeks later, I'm like, Hey, what were the results of the trial camp? And they're like, Oh, well, mm, you didn't get signed. <laughs> I said, I figured, I said, what, what do I need to do to get, um, to make it? And, uh, they were like, you know, you're for, for three or four months of wrestling, you know, your, 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 your promos were good. Your matches were good for your experience level. They said, there's just one problem. And I think big bad John walked by and they were like, look like a superstar. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I was working out, but like, I wasn't, I didn't, I was young. Like I, I didn't, I didn't yeah. know, you know, what, what, how to eat properly, how to diet properly, you know? So, uh, but I ended up kind of, uh, <laughs> doing what I had to do and I ended up getting signed. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that was April, 2003 started wrestling probably September, 2001 I mean, signed April, 2003. That's awesome. Yeah. So how yeah, old but, were you at that time? 21 or even 21 yet? I I think I was yeah probably yeah around twenty one, yeah, yeah maybe, maybe not even twenty one maybe twenty. Well, I, yeah. I remember one time down there, and I I mean we didn't really hang out, but I do remember going out for some time. 
I remember you there and I think you were just, I think maybe seen it was it your birthday or Cena's birthday. And I just remember you were hammered. I remember you were just like, they were carrying <laughs> you around or something. Oh, That's that all I really that might have been my twenty first birthday. That might have Danny been your twenty first birthday. Yeah, Danny got a limo and maybe drink a ton of wine at his house, and then uh, and I think when they were back in the limo off his steep driveway, it ended up like sliding and ruined some of his grass. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, they they took me out. Oh, I think actually Canyon got the uh, got the limo that night. Um, but uh, but yeah, we went out partying and drinking, and yeah, it was a uh, it was a lot of fun from what I remember. <laughs> That's wild. So when did you start then when you when you got to when when did you have rip? Did you you had rip I had a trainer? I had some rip time, once right? once we moved to the new building. Um and I can't I'm I think that's when Rip became our trainer. And I think after Rip, I I could get it wrong, it was Lance Storm. And I think after Lance Storm it was Al Snow. And then I think that was it. But yeah, Rip was our first trainer at the new building. So I, you got you got to tell us about that. You got to you got to take us through a little bit. Rip meeting Rip. What do you thought of Rip? What those practices were like? You know, what, Rip. I don't know if you remember this, but I was backstage at the Mechanic Street. I think it was one of my first or second times going backstage at OVW. And again, I was nineteen. I didn't know anyone in Louisville. I was terrified. I didn't know pro wrestling really. So you're kind of backstage, just keeping your mouth shut and ears open. You know, eyes open, ears eyes open you know mouth shut ears open as well um and rip i think danny you walked by and nick was like hey rip this is one of my new trainees johnny jeter <laughs> and then you're like oh hey how you doing kid you're like you ever seen anything like this before and you pulled out packing and put it like right in my face and and i just no sold it i'm like no i haven't but like whoa <laughs> you're like okay you walked away and then nick looks at me and he said something like you know good job kid <laughs> like i didn't i didn't sell it or put it over you know what i mean but uh that was my first uh experience meeting rip rogers uh <laughs> that is great man <laughs> yeah but as a trainer the, no as a trainer you know it's you know it's funny like i rip was the best i mean we've had a lot of great trainers and everyone added their their own flavor on things and everyone had their strengths right um rip all around was probably the best trainer like i ever had um and i think you don't really know it at the time like i think you you're going through it and you know you're learning um and man we were we were busting our ass what was it eight to noon you know yeah. and and you know and and again i we didn't have personal trainers or anything like back then and I probably should have done better to eat more or get protein. I know Rip kept saying, Jeter, have you eaten today? Eat a protein bar. You need to eat right now. <laughs> and uh, I, I I probably should have been been better about that. But there were a lot of times, man. I mean, we dude, we were, we must have burned thousands of calories doing that hour chain drill. Um, just just having matches every. I mean, with matches, matches, matches. You know, um, promo. Like we we went pretty hard that entire time. Um, and I think after a while it, it just, I mean, it, it kind of, it kind of, at least for, I'll speak for myself. It, it wore me out a little bit. And I think at one point, I think Dr. Tom took me in the back. I think they were kind of talking to everyone individually. And, and, uh, I just said like, look, it's, it, it's a lot. You're going what four or five days a week. You're doing that with the exception four days a week, with the exception of the shows. Um, and I just said like, it's just, it, it's, it's a lot. And I, I felt like I was losing my passion for wrestling a, a little bit. And then Rip goes, it's like, Jeter, it's, it's kind of like practice. Like a lot of football players don't like going to practice, but you look forward to the games. And, and he was right. And I think looking back now, like I, I was learning, like I was getting, you know, top notch training with rip that entire time, but I was too young and naive to realize it. Yeah. Um, I think I did realize it, but I wasn't maybe appreciating it as much as uh, as I do now. When I reflect back on it, I'm like, wow, I had every opportunity to learn from the best in this business, and like, I probably should have taken advantage of it more. You know what I mean? I didn't. I didn't realize it, um, and probably a lot of us didn't realize it. I think when you're in that bubble, all you keep thinking about is, you know, I'm ready. I, I want to go to the next level. Right. You know, when are they going to call me up? Oh, this guy got called up before me what you know blah 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 and then you kind of get like a little bit of a chip on your shoulder and then everyone you almost feel you almost victimize yourself everyone does it like oh this person has that and i don't you know and it, i think a lot of us were doing that and i think at the end of the day we should have just been grateful that we had this opportunity to get paid to be pro wrestlers and wor work out and and have access and exposure to someone like rip al danny uh, land just all you guys just to kind of you know who are taking the time to go out of their way to make us better um 
But uh, yeah, I don't know if you remember, but there was there was myself and some other non-contract guys in that class for a while. So you could have been us. We were paying to be there to to go. (laughs) Yeah, getting paid to be there, (laughs) saying this is too hard, this is too much. We're paying to go from eight to noon. We're paying. Yeah. (laughs) So yeah, yeah, you could have been that that person. That must have been tough, though. I mean, like, I mean, because we were getting obviously our our WWE paychecks to be there, right? But if you're there, you're paying to be there. That means you're away from work. In which you know is, is your way of making money so that that that's even a, a huger commitment you know to some degree oh, i thought it was awesome now did you ever get kicked out of the ring did rip ever ding get the fuck out did you ever oh get- yeah i don't know if you remember this rip but i think uh you were you were like you're like jeter get in there with uh melissa coates <laughs> out of the match i got kicked out with her once did you yeah who, who hasn't been kicked out of the ring with melissa coates? <laughs> all right Pete. Uh, but uh, no, we got in there, and I, and I think you know we again we were going so long, so many days, blah blah blah. You know, it's and I got in there with Melissa, and you kind of just recognize maybe her strengths, her weaknesses, and how can I accentuate those strengths and hide those weaknesses? Well, I know she's a bodybuilder. I'm like, well, why don't we do a pose off for the shine? <laughs> so I get in there as a heel. I start doing my poses, this and that, and then as soon as like I call her out, she does her poses, and I like whoa whoa whoa, and I bump back, I roll out of the rig, and then I think Rip's just like. Jeter, Melissa, get the fuck out of the rig. <laughs> I, I thought it was kind of creative, though. I think it sounds awesome. I had her, um, she she tried to leapfrog me. Oh, and how'd that go? It, no, I, we got kicked <laughs> out of the ring. I mean, it was a disaster. Get the fuck out. But she just wanted to try it. I was like, yeah, let's just try it. What the hell? We're at practice. That's what this yeah, shit is. That's practice. what it's for. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't go over well with Rip. He was... He was not happy. You stupid motherfucker. You're six foot five. Yeah. She's a girl. What the fuck? I said, it's practice. Get the fuck out of here. Get, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I want to use that line on my students, but I only have four. And I'm like afraid of like demoralizing them. Oh, yeah. like they, they quit or don't show up. You can't, you can't say anything to them. They'll be fucking be butthurt. Yeah. What do you, hey, what nice do you got to- on Jeter, Rip? You got any Jeter stories? You remember Jeter? Impressions? Anything? I just remember... Now think back, Johnny. I had seventy over seventy guys get a job that walked in paying their own dime. Yeah, and that's what I'm most fucking proud of. The guys got fucking runs from not knowing anything. Right. The fucking and you guys pushing each other because I knew when the fucking males are in there, they're going to push each other because the alpha is going to come out. Yeah. And then, the weak ones will weed themselves out. But I wanted to push, 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 because my big goal was to get the guys that paid their own fucking dime to be better than the fucking guys they said were the chosen few. Yeah. When I had over 70 guys get fucking jobs as a ref, stooge, guy wrestler, girl wrestler, whatever, that made me fucking... Because I, I said, these motherfuckers are traveling here. They got no fucking money working at fucking Chili's or whatever. And I got these lazy motherfucking guys, WWE's. No, I think you're on your F bomb count. Right? Paying them. And a lot of them don't appreciate it. Just think they're fucking over and they're fucking rotten. These yeah. So I, 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 I taught with the chip on my shoulder to make. To give these guys, the underdogs, a chance to fucking, and they get a fucking job. Sure. And it's absolutely fucking, when you're thinking, sure, we got Brock who was making five grand a week to learn, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they're they're the chosen few. Now let's let these guys that ain't the chosen few grab that fucking brass ring and get a fucking job and get a fucking run there. Right, like you, you were, you were really, you're, you're too young. It's like they signed Renee Dupree, and he didn't have a chance there because he was a teenager hanging out with grown men, but he looked like a grown man, but he was a goddamn baby. Yeah, eighteen so, years old. Yeah, this is just too fucking young to go out there, and you're. you're they were on that kick for a while, but they've kind of gotten away from that, I think, haven't they? I mean, it doesn't seem like they I, sign a bunch of eighteen-year-olds anymore. Like, yeah, I don't know. I, they, I would, they, I, I, I would hope not. I think just again, we were a lot of us were there were men there, like guys like Brock, and then there were guys like us. And you know, we were young, impressionable. Um, we didn't have like 
our families there as like our moral compasses. And then you're around maybe some guys that are positive influences, but also guys that probably aren't the best influences. And you want to kind of play wrestler or live the life. And so I think you're kind of doing a balancing act of staying on track, staying at home, watching tape and learning your craft and putting a hundred percent of yourself into practice. And then you're, you're kind of, you know, balancing that with, you know, Oh, Hey, we're all going out to the clubs tonight. And then, you know, guys say, Hey, take, take this, take that. And I, it's again, we were young, impressionable. And then you kind of, Hey man, this guy got called up before you, you know, you were better than that. Like, you know, everyone was doing that, you know, everybody. And I think it's just, it kind of gives you this mentality that you're entitled. And then it's like, once you feel like you're entitled or that, you know, everything, well, then you stop learning and then you stop putting forth the effort that you should in practice. And, and I'm, and I'm not saying everyone did that. I think everyone had moments, had moments like that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it was, uh, I think it was tough. Like someone for like Renee coming in, didn't know anyone there. Um, and then you almost get judged in a way because like, Hey, who's this new 18 year old jacked up kid they just brought in and then, uh, he's trained and then he gets called up and then you're like, wow, he was here for three months. Everyone else has been here a year, two years, you know, it's, there's a lot of that going on. So it, it kind of makes it tough for, for anyone in that situation to, to kind of stay the course, um, and, uh, and make it to the next level and, and keep your head on straight. Yeah, man. So we're under 10 minutes right now. Just to let you know, we're about 842 mark. Um, okay. so I, I do have a question for you though. What, so what was it like? Cause I, I, I mean, I never got signed. I never was, you know, in the WWE, so to speak. What was it like just leaving? Like your whole life has basically been wrestling. You, you were at the top. I mean, you were, you're on TV with Flair, Shawn Michaels, whoever, What's it like going for all that? Then just I'm done with the wrestling, like for good. I mean, it it, it can was. You, can it you was, describe it at all? I know it'd be a, a yeah, maybe hundred percent. It was extremely humbling. Like, you know, I I probably went for. I mean, well, I I kind of quit working out. I was studying. I was working. I worked at a as a as physical therapy assistant. I was doing massage therapy. Going back to college, you go from making money to being on TV to now I'm sitting in a now I'm working an eight to five. Uh, and I'm sitting in college classes with kids that are like half my age. And I was, it's, and then if someone finds out, they're like, oh, wow, that's so cool. Why did you leave? <laughs> and then right. you kind of have to explain that. And it's just, you go from, it's, it's humming. I ended up going from like, you know, having my own condo in Louisville and this and that. And then I just ended up going to living in like a studio apartment right outside of Can Cal State uh, University Northridge. Um, so no, it was a hundred percent. Um, humbling because I think for a lot of guys, when they leave pro wrestling, pro wrestling is their identity. That's all they know. Yeah. That's who they are. Um, I think wrestling was something I did, but it didn't define who I was. And you kind of had to redefine who you are once I had to redefine who I was once I left wrestling. Um, and I think that was also a little bit of a, a, a struggle because you compare yourself to all the friends you grew up with. Oh, they have houses. They're, they're married. They have kids. And I'm like, well, I was making money, but now I'm not. It's like, it's like if you were trying to be a doctor for seven years and you become a doctor and then you leave it and you're like, I don't even want to yeah. be it in the medical field anymore. Now you're starting from ground zero. That that's tough. Um, you must be but, doing uh, all right. You got property in California. You must be doing, you must have <laughs> okay bounced back. All right. It, it, yeah, I, I did bounce back. All right. Um, it took, it, it, it took some time, but, uh, but yeah, no, I'm happily married. I got a kid on the way. We got a, I got a, lovely house in northern california um and, and most and yeah, importantly man, no. you got your long hair back man and i got yeah it hasn't i haven't yeah. started to lose it yet it hasn't gone gray yet um yeah you got but, your uh, haircut man you know you know when you got your like favorite rock stars and they cut their hair and you're like man yeah, yeah. Jeter, when Jeter <laughs> cut his hair i was like ah jeter can't cut his hair man oh, yeah i was yeah. so happy that you got your hair back it's awesome i like you gotta have I'm gonna ride, hair, baby. i'm gonna ride this train as long as long as i can you gotta bleach. You bleach it, don't you? You gotta bleach in there, don't you? Yeah, I got a, I got a little bit of bleach. Look in at there. that, looking good, you baby. Know. Actually, How are you like thirty eight? Forty. 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 The forty one this year, but no, I did pick up wrestling again in twenty eighteen. Uh, uh, I I did a show with Mondo and Kenny, and then I came back to Arizona. That was we just did Spirit Squad, and I was not in ring shape, and I was blown up like after an arm drag. Uh, but I got back to Arizona, and they were like, "Hey, why don't you just wrestle locally at Championship Wrestling from Arizona?" And I was like. I ain't got nothing else to do. Like, you know, F it. Why not? So uh I got into somewhat shape wrestling, you know, in ring shape, and I just started just wrestling and had a great time. Um I think I yeah, saw that's why that Facebook or something. I remember seeing some okay. videos. 
Yeah, I posted. That's why I grew my hair long. I'm like, well, if I'm gonna wrestle, like, I wanna, I wanna be cool. <laughs> so speaking of wrestling matches, how bad do you remember? Two two part question here. Do you remember wrestling me and OVW? And was that probably one of your top five matches that you've ever had in your career? <laughs> oh man, don't set me up like that. Uh honestly. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to answer. I, I, you I, had a I, singles I, match one time somewhere, some little bitty school something. And I remember um I worked the I, leg and I remember Rip came in the locker room and put us over like at intermission or something. And it was like, and I was like, God, is he he's gonna get me so much heat right now? Because he he never really said too much good about me at all. And said our match was great, <laughs> sold great, worked the leg. He doesn't give out compliments very often. He was putting us over, and I, of course, was not under contract. And 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 I was like, oh shit. But yeah, that was the match. And we had a, a tag match, me and somebody, I don't remember who against you and Cage, I remember one time. Awesome. But the singles match was pretty good, according to Rip. But I remember you coming up to me one day and you were like, So is Rip like your is he your uncle or <laughs> how, how are you related to Rip? I was like, I'm not related to Rip. You're, you're like, you're not. I don't know if you're ribbing me or not. You're like, you're not related. I was like, fuck no, we're not related. <laughs> fuck no, no. But I think I do. I think I do remember having that. I do remember thinking that because I remember you guys always seemed more. I mean, like I drove closer, him everywhere. I, we're from the home, same hometown. How did that? Drive. How did how did that? He just started asking you for rides, and then that just became a normal thing. <laughs> I was teaching in Muncie, Indiana, which was like three hours north of Louisville. In Jeffersonville. So I, I put on a show at my school. I don't know. You surely came up there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100% I did. Yeah. Well, then I started, event, I think. So then I started training in Nick's class. I would drive from Muncie to Louisville. Well, then a lot of times, once I got to the advanced class, I was doing like Rip's class. I would do it in the summertime when I wasn't working. So I would stop on my way to, in Seymour and pick him up and then drive him because it was on the way or, or in where we were coming from. But I would pick him up and drive him to class. So you know, it was eight to noon class. We were getting there like six thirty. So keep that in mind too. And you're yeah. saying this this last too long. And I think you were the one late and would text Dinsmore, "Hey, unlock the door!" Like after eight o'clock and try to sneak in too every once in a while. Probably, gotta, yeah. Gotta, gotta, gotta remember that. But yeah, so yeah. he's from my hometown, man. I grew up. I was five years old. He'd watched him all the time. He'd come back to you know okay. hometown do shows. My dad would help promote, sell tickets, all that kind of stuff. So awesome. I knew Rip since I was a baby. Basically. Okay. Yeah, I, I do remember asking you about that, but I couldn't remember the answer. <laughs> and here we are today, man. Lila Studios. Look, we finally made it. Right, yeah. We're yeah. Better than this. <laughs> we got our <laughs> we got our Ryan Nemeth heel movie shirts on. I see that. He personally That's awesome. sent us. He personally sent us in the mail. Now if we could just get Jeter to send us some uh some of his some, wrestling school shirts, man. So manicore birch. Yeah, yeah, I'll send you guys some manicore. Just let me know what sizes you guys are, and I'll I'll uh, get you guys a t-shirt. Rip likes schmedium, so he likes to. I like what schmedium. You gotta that? get the guns Small. out. Real, real. Oh, child, little child's medium for Rip. Yeah. We got two minutes, Rip. You got anything else here? Yeah. I always cut him off at the end. He gets mad at me, so I want to give him okay. a chance. I just listen. I just like the stories and like you know to hear all this stuff and yeah, guys. That everybody's story was different. They had a goal. They fucking made it. And unless you're related to somebody or married to the boss's daughter, you ain't going to be in there a long time. They need to keep changing faces. That's that's the wrestling business. But there's just really not places to go anymore because it's all different now. And I yeah, but... haven't watched it since 2002. So I, I know what I know. And I don't want to watch TV because I get I'd get mad because it's total horseshit. Excuse me. And but if if you've been there as long as I had, you would know it's total horseshit. Guys today, oh, it's great. I said, fuck you, you don't even know what the fuck's great. I, I, I said, fuck you, don't know what a great match is. You don't know what a great match is. I try. We try. I think we put on Russell. We put on some pay per view or something like that. And I was having my wife watch it, and she was looking at me, and she and I could tell she was getting bored. I'm like, no, I swear. It, it'll probably hopefully get better like this and that, but it just, there was no storytelling and it was just all moves. And she was, even I was getting a little bit bored and uh, it's just changed so much. That locker room is just so different. You, you had to shake everyone's hands. You had to, if you didn't, you got heat for the littlest things. I felt like I was walking on eggshells all the time. And from what I hear now, it's 
nothing like that. Morrison was telling me, he goes, yeah, I have my match. I don't even stay and watch the show. Like you had to watch the monitor backstage. He's like, I just, uh, I'll, I'll have my match go back. And Miz and I were watching the rest of Raw in the hotel lobby bar, having a drink while it was on TV. Oh my God. And I was like, man, times have changed. <laughs> wow. But, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, hey, thanks for coming on today, man. Thanks for yeah. in your busy schedule. Oh man, I, I appreciate you guys pushing the top, pushing it. And uh no, it was it was a real pleasure to meet to to be on the show and, and talk with you guys. Uh really appreciate it. We'll do it again. Yeah. Big gold and a bill fold. So swole that I can't get the shit closed. So I money fold and rubber band wrap. And when it pop, bitches sound like a hand clap.